all local counties across the Big Bend, across southwestern Georgia, and south central Georgia are under a hurricane warning. And it simply means the expectation for at least hurricane force gusts for inland areas and perhaps sustained hurricane force winds for especially the coastal zones, that's going to be anticipated within the next 36 hours. And we're talking probably in the next 24 to 30 hours. Tomorrow evening is going to be the prime time for a lot of this action to come up from the bay and then pass to the north pretty swiftly. It's not going to linger all night long, but those evening hours are going to be rough for several of us. The storm surge is going to be rough for anybody along the coast or any interests that are there because there's a high expectation with the wind forces as they are pushing up in this shallow shelf area of Appalachia Bay, especially if it happens at high tide, there's going to be a good chance to exceed 12 feet from roughly the uh, St. Teresa area right around to Steenhatchee and perhaps a little zone here where we have the Big Bend Wildlife Refuge, the Ecofia River mouth, the Oscilla mouth, and over towards St. Mark's perhaps as well. If it happens at high tide, we could run about 15 to 18 feet or higher above typical dry ground. That would certainly cause severe inund inundation for those areas. Rain starting even in some cases tonight, but kind of scattered. I think it becomes more steady through the morning and afternoon time frame. So multi-hour rain totals can easily be around 5 to 10 inches with some higher amounts, and that can trigger some flooding, especially in areas that were soaked by Debbie not too long ago. Thunderstorms in Thomas County moving northeast. Areas of general rain will also start to traverse the Oscilla River area, and that can maybe cause some dampness. It's an extensive wind field that the hurricane is carrying when it comes to tropical storm force winds. Hurricane force winds are much more confined, and that's something we've got to really emphasize because you'll have some breezy conditions well before the core gets to you. But when it does, it is compact. We're looking for signals that can cause it to maybe shift a little bit more to the east. One concern I have is that it's been moving more to the northwest lately. That's going to make it a longer trek for it to maybe get picked up by these upper level winds and be shoved perhaps towards the northeast. So the more west it goes, the more effort it has to have to get into our eastern sections of the Big Bend. So that's why there's concern about especially the Tallahassee metro area encountering some pretty intense winds. Here's our forecast and focus pausing it. 8 o'clock with the eye right over Appalachia Bay, just south of Alligator Point. Around the 25-mile buffer of that eye is where we're going to have likely the hurricane force winds. And you'd have to be right around, I'd say, 5 to 10 miles within the eye wall to get in on the peak wind forces at the coast. But that can carry inland, and there will still be some gusty trends from roughly the 319 corridor to the north and east, and those gusts will be pretty hefty. But again, it is a system that will be steadily moving and not lingering. But because it's going so fast, it can carry those strong winds well inland. This is one projection of how the winds could maybe cover more of our landscape. And I think it's underdoing the tropical storm winds, quite honestly. But a core of hurricane force winds is tight around the eye, and that will start to move inland. And as it does so, we start to lose the overall sustained forces of tropical storm winds, but you can still have those intense gusts. That's why there's such a concern about how long that can happen, even if it's just a couple of hours.